Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going to be going from here in Florida all the way out to the West Coast at Madera, California, and young driver Joey East. Joey, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good, man. So we're about as far apart from each other as you can get. I don't know how many thousands of miles, but I know it's a long way away. So um, let's kind of get right into this. I want to talk a little bit about um, your 2020 season in review and talk about some of the highlights. And I think one of the big highlights was your win at Stockton 99 Speedway. Yeah, we started out, the season started out good. We did some testing and then right when we were about to get started, it was kind of when everything got shut down. And then our first back race was at Stockton. And then we unloaded and right away the car was good, just made some small adjustments on Friday night. And then Saturday, we were top of the board in 12 fine. And then well, when we got to the invert, it was the invert of 10. So we started in 10. And then I kind of just slowly worked my way towards the front. I was following Jeremy Doss and just kind of followed him till about lot 20. And then I got by him. And then I just made a few more. I got on the high line when I was in fourth. And the uh, outside was really good. I stopped in and I got up to second and me and Cole Moore, I just kind of following him and just kind of letting the race run down, waiting for him to make a mistake. And he said he didn't make any mistakes. And then there's finally a caution and on the restart, he was on the high side. And I think maybe the guy in fourth kind of got into the back of him and got him a little loose. And I was able to clear him and then led the rest of the race and then him and Jeremy Doss were battling right behind me, so it was really cool to be able to race the two of them, both SRL champions, the last 2019 and 2018 champions. So that was really cool. And then the whole season just been going pretty good. It started out really good, and then we've had a little bit of bad luck, but we've just had a lot of speed and really fast cars at every race. And then I feel like we're starting to get some better finishes in the last few weeks, and it's getting a lot better. Yeah, you've been fast everywhere that you went. So I got to ask you a question. I mean, you grew up in the Madera area. You grew up, you know, basically there at Madera Speedway. Going and watching these two guys race, I mean, did you ever think that Joey East would be beating Jeremy Doss and drivers like that? I mean, what was that like to be inside the car? Were you nervous? Oh, yeah, I was a little nervous. My car was perfect that whole weekend, so I knew I had the best car there. And it was just a really good car, and I knew if I had a chance to win, that was going to be the race. So I was really excited, but I've always looked up to them. They're both really good clean racers, and I've been I've watched them battle it out in front of me before, and it was cool to be there with them and racing with them and beat them. Right. So for a lot of people that may not be familiar with Joey, um, anybody that knows anything about Junior Late Model, because he was the 2019 Junior Late Model champion, uh, Joey actually had a, an hour special on Math TV called Farm Boy to Champion, the Joey East story, which was pretty cool. Um, I mean, he races pro late models. He's raced some SRL. He's done some ARCA. You've raced just about any, everything that has to do with the late model circuit out there on the West Coast. And again, this year you made your ARCA debut. So tell us a little bit about the ARCA debut. And then we want to dig into the race that you just got done running at, uh, at Vegas a little bit. Because, man, I tell you what, I think if we don't have that electrical system, Joey East parks it in victory lane. Yeah, my debut, my first run, I think it was in February at the Bowling. It was a really good race in practice. We were kind of mid-pass, just kind of depends when we had new tires on and when everyone else. So it was kind of hard to know exactly where we were. So we were kind of mid-pass in the practices. And the car felt good to me, though. And then we went out and qualified when everyone had the new tires and everyone was feeling hard. And I was really shocked that I didn't expect to qualify third. And I was really happy with that. And then in the race, we started third. We kind of lost a few positions and we're about fifth or sixth, just kind of racing and saving our stuff. And then we weren't able to 
finish that race. I wonder if our lines melted to the rear end, but it was just a really cool experience. And that was also before we were shut down and there were people in the stands. So it's really cool to have that many people there. It's all packed. And then there's just everyone on the front stretch during the signing, the autograph session. It was all just a really cool weekend. Yeah. So let's talk about the last race, the ARCA race at Vegas. I mean, you were, again, you were fast. <clears throat> Excuse me. You qualified well, and you were racing up front for the lead. So kind of walk us a, a through that weekend. Yeah, we got there. It's just we had tech Friday night, and then the race was Saturday. We only had a one-hour practice qualifying. So, And I know those guys have been racing ARCA all year and were used to everything when I only had one race. So I, I was excited. I knew our car was going to be really good, but I didn't expect in the first practice. It was just really fast, and there's an hour session, and we ended up second, just a, I think just a few hundreds of thousands off the first place, and the car felt super good on the long run. So I was really excited, and we started second in the race, and then I kind of got past by a couple of guys and was in fourth, and then I got right back up to third place, and I was kind of slowly catching the leaders, and then they started battling, and I got right up to them, and then my brakes got hot, so I kind of faded back to around, I think it was about mid-pack, and then a caution came out, and they cooled off, and I just drove it a little different, and then tried to save my brakes a lot more than what I was doing, and I see things happen, and I got by a few cars, and I was able to get a third, and then I got by Jackie for second, and then it was a really long run, and I started to lose my brakes again, and there's a caution that came out, so I was happy because they were starting to catch me a little bit, and then I was happy to let it cool off, but then on the start when I went to go, the car just cut out, and one of the, the, one of the wires to the alternator came off, and that's why none of my fans were working most of the race, and that's kind of how my brakes got hot, too, so... But it was a really good weekend, and the car was super fast. So it kind of felt like the stopping car just felt perfect. Yeah, it's very encouraging, that run. I mean, the, the bottom line was you were super fast. And I think when I talked to Mike Nake the next day, he's like a $15 part, you know, could have cost us that race. But at the, at the end of the day, great performance by you. Um, and, Joey, you've really been out in front of a lot of people this year not only on the track, but also off track with a lot of publicity going on. And what was it like to know that you had a one hour special on MAV TV? What was, uh, what, what, what's your thought about that show? Oh, um, that was really cool. I was, I didn't really know it till like once we won the championship and then I knew they were going to have it and I was really excited and yeah, it was just really cool. And thank you to, Kenny Shepard and everyone at Madeira and Max TV for making it all possible. It's, it's, it's kind of weird watching. It's just like, yeah, I didn't know what to think. Yeah, it's really cool though. <laughs> well, and then last week, you know, I don't know how many thousands and thousands of people that got magazines delivered into their mailbox and or digital print on, from the performance racing industry magazine, their big edition, and guess who's on the cover of that magazine? It was you. What was that like? Oh, um, that was really cool. I know, uh, Jason Wetterhouse, our track photographer, told me about it, and then we parked the car, and we took a few pictures, and he just kind of said it. He wasn't really sure it was going to happen either. He just knew there was a little bit of a chance, and he sent the pictures over, and I wasn't really... I kind of forgot about it. I wasn't sure. It didn't seem like it was going to happen. And then Mike Nate, my team owner, he sent me a picture of the magazine, and I had no clue until he sent it. And then just right now, I was just arrived today, and it was really cool looking at that. And to so thank you to PRI, Jason Woodhouse, and everyone that just had that happen. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I would have to say that was pretty cool. I, I was... Uh real excited when I saw that and then we got it out online and everything. Now, let's kind of go off the track a little bit and let's talk about a, 
I think a special relationship that you have with your dad, and I think that probably started out on the farm, but it's now it's kind of carried over to the racetrack. Can you share with the viewers a little bit about that bond? Yeah, I'm really close with my dad. He taught me everything I know from working on the farm and everything, and then and racing. He got me into it, so it's really cool. And he always supports me and helps me with anything. And it's really nice. And he enjoys coming to all the races and hanging out with the team. And he just likes everyone now. And he just loves being at the track and working. And it's always a good time with him. Yeah. So let, let's back up because you said he taught you everything that you know. I don't think he taught you a lot about racing behind that race car wheel because uh, it's always funny when I talk to your dad. He's like, if you don't need to know anything about farming, I'm your guy. But when it comes to that race car, I don't really have a lot of experience there. But again, we can see that bond. It's very something special. And let's also talk about Joey out on the farm. Give us a typical day of what, what it looks like when you're actually not racing and you're spending time on your farm. Yeah, when I'm not racing, I'm well, at school. I'm usually always working on days off and just kind of always enjoying that. And just kind of depends what time of the season what I'm doing. Like this, the beginning of the summer, I was driving the chopper and chopping the wheat. And then I kind of went from that and then at the end I was shaking the almonds and that was my first year doing that so I really enjoyed that and then just there's always something different depending on what time of the year it is there's always something to do it's always really busy and I always just enjoy working ever since I was a little on the dairy and everything. Now you've only got a couple races left this year I think you've got one more, maybe maybe two more ARCA races. I know you're going to be racing at Kern, and I think we're still in discussions a little bit about going to, to Phoenix. But where do you see Joey East in 2021? Um, I hope to be doing some more ARCA races, just kind of getting more of that in. And it would be really cool to win a race, and I'd be really happy. And then I think we're also going to do some SRL and the Super Lake models again. That's a, there's a lot of good drivers in that that anyone could win, and I feel like that series helps me become a lot better driver too. So just kind of hopefully everything goes to plan. So are you looking forward to going to Kern? So yeah, I'm really excited for Kern. The car is really fast at the bowling, and I'm expecting it to be really fast there. It almost just Kern almost just seems like a bigger bowling to me, so I think it'll be close to the same end. I think the car will be really fast. Yeah, I think you got a good shot going there, too. So we're excited about that. Well, Joey, we're just about out of time. Would you like to give a shout out to any of your sponsors? Yeah, I'd like to thank my sponsors, the Ag Center 59, Ken Vasilla, and Richard Mee, Central Irrigation, Tree Barber, County Shack, ECB Farming, and Team and Nurseries, and everyone who makes it happen and all the support. Well, there you've got it, ladies and gentlemen. One of the top young drivers in the country. It's Joey East out of Madera, California. I encourage you to go check him out on Facebook at Joey East Racing. Go check out his website, joeyeastracing.com. Make sure while you're there to check out the Fan Zone. Subscribe to his newsletter and follow this young man because you're going to be hearing a lot about him still this year. But I think 2021 is going to be a major breakout year for Joey East. So, Joey, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Check back with us in two weeks as we'll be bringing you another Race Face Spotlight right here from our studios in Florida. So go out there, have a great race weekend. My name is Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.